Was the fork wrong, folks? The fork. The fork is never wrong. We told you so. Are you ready, Fred? Are you ready Not to yet. get outside and see the folks out there calmly and quietly yeah. celebrating the pirate victory? They're real <laughs> Someplace special. The home of the world champion Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> KDKA Pittsburgh, Group W, Westinghouse Broadcasting. It's a beautiful night in Pittsburgh. The sun is shining, even though it's dark, and we should have some sunshine later on today. Good morning, I'm Fred Hansberger with KDKA News at Midnight. Brought to you by the Old Southern Pancake Houses, now in four locations for your convenience. Here's Pat Kelly hitting for Rick Dempsey. He hits a fly ball to center. Omar Marino is there, and the Pittsburgh Pirates are the champions of the world. They were down three games to one, and they came back to beat Baltimore. Ben Scully, as he described the end of Game 7 of the 1979 World Series, our Pirates are the world champions, beating the Baltimore Orioles in Game 7. How does Phil Garner feel about the win? Well, I don't know. I haven't had time to think anything right now. It's just too exciting. Yeah, you knew what was going to happen. Well, we didn't know anything. It looked like it was going to be close there, particularly after they hit the home run. It was just too close. We didn't know what was going to happen. But Pop came through for us. The rest of the guys did a super job. Great pitching again, and there we are. We're the world champs now. Pirate pitcher Jim Rooker also feels good about the win. I think what we did so far is what we have done coming back in a series like this just says what kind of club that we have. It took all 25 guys to do it. At one time or another, one of us stepped in and did the job that uh, they were supposed to do. You know, we hear a lot about brotherhood and love and friendship and team, but is this one for real? It is for real. I think the people that have been knocking us are the phonies. We're the guys that are for real, and they're the ones I think they are a little jealous. The MVP of the World Series first baseman, Willie Stargell. You know, it was Stargell's two-run homer in the sixth inning that gave the Bucks the victory. Score again, Bucks four, Orioles one. That's it for the 1979 baseball season, and our Bucks are now on top. Only two, two cities in the United States have ever had football teams and baseball teams take the world championship. It was New York City, and now the Pittsburgh Pirates and Pittsburgh Steelers. There are some people gathering in the Golden Triangle downtown at this hour, but police are stationed throughout downtown. 250 extra officers have been brought in. They are stopping all vehicular traffic from entering the Triangle. People are being allowed to walk downtown, but mostly it's just small groups here and there. The official celebration for the Bucks will be held Friday. Details of that citywide party are yet to come from City Hall. The Bucks will be flying back into Pittsburgh in the wee hours of this morning. They're expected to arrive at Pittsburgh International Airport. Again, there's no set time for their arrival this morning. KDKA news time is 12.02. We'll recap the game for you again right after the news. In some other news, classes are due to begin in the Bethel Park School District this morning. Striking teachers ordered back to the classrooms by a county judge. Details of the story from KDKA's Bob Kometz. The word that classes would resume came shortly after Judge Bernard McGowan ordered the district's striking teachers back to their classrooms for 180 days. The attorney for the teachers, Lou Kushner, was asked if he'll recommend to the teachers that they return to work. 
I instruct them that it's an order of court and that they are obligated under the law to follow orders of court. Kushner explained how he interprets the judge's ruling. My understanding of the order is that the teachers are required to go back to the classroom, that they go back under the recently expired contract, as that contract has been amended by agreements between a party and under uh, the board's last offer on those items that have not been agreed to. Whether the teachers will return to the classrooms remains a question mark. Attempts to reach teacher union officials have been unsuccessful. Bob Kometz, KDKA News. Word from the Bethel Park Federation of Teachers late tonight is they will obey the back-to-work order. The teachers are expected back in the classrooms this morning. Striking teachers in the Chartiers Houston School District in Washington County are defying a court injunction ordering them back to work. A Washington County judge issued the order Tuesday. Teachers returned to the picket lines instead of the classrooms Wednesday morning. The strike by drivers of the Central Blood Bank in Pittsburgh is over a month old, but Blood Bank Vice President Bill West says there's been a good bit of vandalism, so he's gone to court. Most recently, there's been a, a great deal of interference with uh, Central Blood Bank uh, activities attempting to collect and deliver blood to uh, hospital patients. Uh, there's been a number of uh, uh, blocking incidents of vehicles leaving the garage for emergency deliveries uh, and deliveries of blood uh, and, and related components. Uh, and we found ourselves in a situation yesterday where we finally had to go to court to get a, uh, an injunction to limit the kinds of activity that can occur on a picket line. So far during the strike, 59 tires have been smashed. A brick has been thrown through the blood bank window downtown. Allegheny County Police believe they've cracked the three-year murder case of Heidi Morningstar of Ambridge. Assistant County Police Superintendent Walter Albert says... Two arrests have been made. The criminal homicide and kidnapping charges were filed today by Allegheny County Police homicide detectives against Paul Nazarovich, age 22, of 152 Crestview Village, Ambridge, PA, and a Robert G. Whiteleather, St. Clair Avenue, East Liverpool, Ohio, age 19. These charges stem from the strangulation homicide of Heidi Morningstar, who was 12 years old at the time of her death on September 18, 1976. Albert says a third arrest in the case is expected.